Hi everyone and welcome to today's latest mix set build videos for Monster Hunter World. Today's set will focus on the Emperor's Axe Dick's Switch Axe and creating a build that will dominate the majority of other Switch Axes, with its sheer damage build up from over time and flexible nature of being used against any and all monsters in game. I present to you my Tempest Emperor set. The Emperor's Axe Dick Switch Axe has been quite talked about by a lot of players within the community for its stats, but mainly for its really sharp built in skill that many of the Lenusha weapons can possess. You see, out of all the other Lenusha built in skills, the Razor Sharp skill is practically one of the best sought after skills for all Blade Master builds, as it can allow you to retain your weapon sharpness for much longer than normal, but at the hands of RNG, of course. Now, for Switch Axe, this is a godsend as you can burn through sharpness very quickly when morphing, and while doing so, slowly reduces your damage over time and does need to sharpen more often if you don't have a handicraft jewel or a charm to help you out. This is what makes the Empress Axe so great as with the Razor Sharp skill, you can retain your sharpness longer and stay within the white to pull off more damage over time, and sometimes makes it so that you don't even need to have to have a handicraft at all, but you're still at the hand of RNG as it may not proc the Razor Sharp skill all the time. So let's look at the stats. The weapon has an attack value of 630 and it's already 8 weapon which means it only has one augmentation slot. It has natural white sharpness and 10% natural affinity. It also comes with 2 level 3 dual slots, 240 blasts, a power file, so more damage when it switches into a sword mode, and built in razor sharp. Its attack value looks low, but with its true war only coming out at 180, it can easily surpass that with further critical skills and attack up skills to make it even more deadly than it currently is. Even if that's not enough, its all round flexible skills can aid you well in building however you like to. But if this weapon is still not good enough for you, then you do have Teosha's Castle Switch Axe, which comes in at 665 attack value, 1 Og slot, natural blue sharpness but can reach white with handicraft, 3 jump blasts, and a power file. Sadly, it doesn't have any dual slot but can be picked up there on the go, if you're ever farming Teostra, and is generally a great Switch Axe for any monster you fight. I'd probably recommend this weapon as a beginner friendly weapon since it's so simple to use. Alternatively, you could go with the Lenusha Axe Ruin or Blaze, as both share similar stats to the Styx version, but have different built-in skills, status and affinity. So don't take my word on it and just play with the Styx version, as the other two are just as great as the Styx version when built around it properly. So today's build focuses on making full use of the weapon's built-in skill and to maximise its damage potential even further to make it a top contender of being an all-time favourite Switch Axe and build for users. So here are the builds and stats. So firstly we have recovery up 3, that will allow me to gain more health back when combined with my health og every time I attack a monster. This was put in place so I can support my peak performance skill 3 which can only activate at max health. So I'm getting the benefit of keeping my health max while also doing more damage. Next I have critical eye 3 for the 10% affinity buff. Weakness exploit 3 for the plus 50 affinity upon monsters weak points. Handicraft 3 to extend the weapon's white sharpness, although with the weapon's built in razor sharp skill, this may not be needed. But it depends as through playing around with the weapon without the skill, sometimes the weapon will lose your sharpness very quickly, with the skill not activating at all. While on the other hand, it may activate 95% of the time, so it's very 50-50 at times. So my advice to you is to go with what you feel is ideal for you, as you can sacrifice your handicraft for more damage, or you keep your handicraft in case you run out of sharpness very quickly. Because although Razor Sharp is very effective and can proc a lot of times, Sometimes it may not proc at all, and if you're fine with going into blue and then green sharpness, by all means pick what you like. Next, we have Maximite 3 for the plus 30 affinity to our base build, Critical Boost 2 for increasing our weapon's critical chance damage, which can be increased to max if you swap the waste out for the Lenos waste. Slot in the missing jewels and then sacrifice 2 medicine slots, or 2 level 1 slots, and then replace them with the critical eye jewel, but only if you have the jewels to spare first. If you don't, Go with what I can you have. Next we have Evade Extender 2 to increase our back and side hops much more wider. Wide range 2 to help with supporting our team, although this part of the Lustre Gloves can be beneficial, not really that useful because it's not really a support build, but it can help at times. Health Boost 1 to help increase our health by plus 15, but it's up to you to decide on whether it is worthwhile or not. And lastly, Razor Sharp, which can negate sharpness loss upon attacking monsters, but only sometimes, since it's all RNG based. Overall, this will give you an attack value of 683, 100 affinity, 411 defense, and probably one of the few best Emperor 6 builds around that will give you everything that you ever wanted. 
well, not everything, but you, you genuinely know what I mean. It'll give you just general power. If it's not power you're looking for, then it'll give you great overall stats. If it's not overall stats, then I, I don't really know what you want. The weapon is also augmented with a health og to keep my health at all time high, but also combined with the peak performance skill and medicine skill, so overall more damage while staying alive. With the weapon in gear and check, you can pull off damage values reaching around 100 plus to 120 plus when in sword mode, or when you pull off the downwards axe slash on a monster. I also highly advise you to make full use of your wild swing move, which is a big damage booster when pulled off right, and can be repeated over and over again as long as the monster is immobilized, or you just have a perfect moment to attack him. Doing this with your health og active and peak performance active will allow you to stay DPS high all the time. I honestly got to say that this set is really great for solo players who want to do large amount of damage through quick and precise combos without having to worry about sharpening all the time. And I also now see why this weapon is so favourable to many players. The Radio Sharp skill when it activates can allow you to combo after combo after combo on the monster without the fear of losing sharpness sometimes. So in the long run you'll be doing more DPS damage compared to the Axe of Demons for example. But overall damage won't be the highest as Axe of Demons will still come out supreme. So if you care about having more DPS than a team or pulling off on a monster you face, then this weapon and the set alone will grant you that wish. But if you want more damage than then, then it's best up to you to switch around the set skills and work from there. Quite an interesting weapon to play around with, and I highly rate one at best that I advise all new and old players to try out when they get the time to do so. So that's the end of the video, if you enjoy the content then do leave a like, a sub and do also press the bell button to stay always updated to when I upload, as I appreciate a lot if you do. But like always thanks for watching and I hope to see you all again soon.